Get your gang face off. Get your gang face Welcome off. back to this week's episode of the South East Women's Pretty Game, game Face Pretty face Show. Off. Huge shout out to Bendigo Bank for bringing us another show. This week we welcome Tess Angren from Bass Coast. Uh, we had a pretty wet and windy weekend of footy, didn't we, Matt? We did. It was horrible. But but first of all, how's your face doing? <laughs> it's better. It's better. better? It's better. Okay. Much better than that photo that's been flicking around. Yeah, because it's a great one. Just uh, <laughs> just to remind everyone, mm. that's the one. Anyway, <laughs> back to football. Uh, so, yes, let's say uh, it was a wet and a windy, horrible weekend that we played some footy. So let's take a bit of a quick Few look at, um, at Division 1. Well... Uh, yeah, it was some, some pretty tight contests. Um, so let's get uh, take a look at some of the, some of the scores. Uh, Devils and Mornington, uh, so 8-7. to seven. It was a <laughs> high, high-scoring game down there at Mornington. It was bloody freezing. Um, it was so wet. There was hail. There was... Uh, the ground was underwater. It was a horrible game of football. And it was much more like playing a combination of soccer and rugby than it was actually playing football. So um, complete credit to uh, the girls down at Mornington because um, they definitely brought it. Uh, but luckily we were able to get over the line. So up the uh, Sharks and Seaford. Uh, this was definitely what I thought would be yeah. the, um, the game of the round there. So um, Sharks took... The chocolates in that one, 26 to 14. Um, Seaford uh, hit the scoreboard first, but the Sharks were able to put in a really second solid quarter and kick uh, 18 points and, and really take off with that. Uh, Amanda Walsh, Mousy played another cracking game as well and uh, really representing some of the young gals out there. <laughs> so, yeah, Sharks are looking really, really good. I think they're the, the sneaky... Um, smoky at the moment. Uh, and then on Sunday we had Cranburn uh, defeat Port Melbourne 35 to 8. So that was one versus, sorry, four versus five there. So Cranburn jumped um, early and uh, really kind of kept uh, Port Melbourne scores until the third quarter. So they've really been the up and comers of the, of the, uh, the league at the moment. How have you been finding the competition? Tess, coming from Bass Coast, you guys had the uh, the bye over the weekend. Good weekend to have the bye. Great weekend to have the so bye. Some would say, yeah. you know, wet, wet footy is um, not too bad for us at the moment. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, after two weeks off, we're definitely ready to, to be back this week and back out on the park. Yep. So, to, to I guess, to discuss a little bit of your background, so you're uh, coaching Bass yeah, Coast at the yes, moment and yeah. taken over midway through the season. Uh Obviously, there's been big, been big changes at Bass Coast in the past kind of year with um, changing divisions and obviously a lot of players kind of coming in and out. How have you and the girls kind of handled that situation? Yeah, it's, um, I guess we probably couldn't have had any more change. Um, uh, obviously, going up the division was a pretty big step up for us. Um, unfortunately, we weren't taking the same um, core group of players that we've had for the last two years up with us because I think... The team we had last year would have been a really competitive um, side in Div 1. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, for various reasons, um, it's quite a new uh, bunch of players. I think we've had 12 first gamers play so far this year. So, um, yeah, to step into Div 1 in your first game, pretty daunting. I think you would you would both agree. But, mm. um, yeah, we've got a pretty good setup at Bass Coast, obviously, um, with the change of coach again mid-season. Um, hasn't been ideal, but um, we've set up a structure to really share the load. Um, so we've got uh, two co-coaches at the moment. So we've got Sophie Bolding, um, who's been in the, the um, Southern Saints system for the last couple of years. So we've got some really um, great um, knowledge come from there. She's she's as a playing coach at the moment. Yeah, she's a gun midfielder. She she's is really great. She is. Um, so she's been that's been really great, um, and she's also doing, I guess, a lot of the player management um, behind the scenes and then um, I'm acting as, as kind of a game day coach. Yep. Um, and we've also brought in um, Brett Beaumont who's a um, really experienced local coach um, down in the Bass Coast area to kind of be a, a coaching mentor and um, provide some guidance to us. Mm. Um, and then we've also got the likes of Kelly O'Neill who's currently playing with the Saints. She comes in when she can as a bit of a skills coach. Um, and Shah Bolding, who um, owns a local gym, she does a lot of the fitness and, and warm-ups and stuff for us. So we've been really able to kind of spread the load um, mm. and utilise the, the skills and um, experience that we've got within our team. Mm. And I think it's probably helped to settle us a little bit. So um, the last probably three or four weeks, um, we've really settled into kind of, you know, um, a reasonable standard of, of football for, mm. um, yeah, for those weeks and, and the team's starting to really come together a little bit so 
um, yeah, we're really happy with, with where we're at, where yeah. we're at, considering, um, yeah, we're probably out of our league a little bit in Div 1, but we're really trying yeah. to at least, you know, um, leave each week, make our opposition have to work really hard. Oh, yeah, and you guys most definitely do that. And, like, I think through a lot of, like, even just kind of looking through your social media and stuff, it mm -hmm. seems as though there's a really good positive vibe um, at the club, doesn't matter what the scoreboard is, that you guys are really kind of... Um, yeah, just very positive about the situation and really attacking it really well. Yeah, and that's it. Um, when we started the club a couple of years ago, our focus um, our focus for success wasn't about winning games necessarily. It was about um, getting girls playing footy, providing an opportunity, so mm. and then providing a pathway um, to keep playing once you you know go through the junior ranks. So um, our measure of success is that we're able to do that, and we were a little bit worried probably coming in to Div One. Um, that it would be really daunting for new girls to come and come and try. Mm. Um, but I guess that the welcoming culture that we have been, been able to um, establish in the first couple of years means that um, girls are coming, they're giving it a go, they're not being disheartened by, by the scoreline. Mm. And we're really trying to focus on, um, I guess, the little, the little wins that we have and, um, and I guess just what it's like to, to play as a team because that's really why we're out there. And, um, a few years ago, we probably wouldn't have dreamt of being able to play footy locally. Mm. Um, and now, you know, that's an option. So, um, yeah, we're, we're still seeing this as a really successful year for us. Yeah, yeah I know you yeah. said you had a lot of new first-year players this yeah. year. Has any any players that we should be looking out for down at Bass Coast? Um, fortunately, I guess um, our really strong players from the first couple of years have already gone up through the ranks. We've got two playing in the VFL. Um, one's been drafted to the um, Richmond's AFL women's team. That's, is that Taylor? Taylor, Taylor yeah. 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 So um, we've certainly we've created that pathway, as we can see, it's evident. But, um, yeah, a lot of the girls that have come this year are first-year players, so they're really still getting their head around um, around the game. But, yeah, I think a, a few will develop into really good really good players. That must be really positive as well, like having someone like Taylor who's come through, because she won like Div Best, uh, League Best and Ferris and kicked something like 67 goals. Yeah. And then like six goals in her first game. Yeah. To know that they can then come through and there is a pathway through your club, that must be really positive to be able to address that. Definitely. And I guess we've got um, now four local youth girls teams. Um, so at the moment we're work working really hard to... Um, work really closely with them and, and to make them feel welcome to come to our club when they're ready to move through the ranks and yeah. then um, to be able to see that there is that pathway if they want to go further. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's awesome. It sounds oh like gosh. you're doing pretty good things down there to kind yeah. of build awareness for yeah. women's football. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, let's uh, <laughs> move on and take a look at some of our goal kickers. Yeah, so the Division 1 leading goal kickers, we have Georgia Harris from the Sharks on 19 goals, Pam Rogers from Cranbourne on 13 goals, Emily McElvina. Emac. McElvina. <laughs> we'll get there right, mate. <laughs> from the Devils with 11 goals. And Shelley Beggs also from the Devils with 11 goals. All right. So the fixture, the upcoming games we've got up uh, this weekend. Port Melbourne versus Mornington. I think that's going to be a real cracking game. Uh, Mornington girls came out pretty hard on the weekend. And uh, I think Port Melbourne have a lot that they're probably going to want to make mm. up for against Cranbourne. So oh, um, I'm going to say... I'm going to, I'm going to say Port Melbourne, just for the hell of it. How are we feeling? Down yeah, there I think Port Melbourne at home, um, they've really been pushing some of the top teams and certainly um, yeah, gave us a good run. We thought we might be a little bit competitive in that game, but, yeah, they blew us away. So. Yeah, I think they're on the up. Something to yeah. come back and prove, I think, after mm. last week's game. Um, St Kilda Sharks and Cranbourne. Um, uh, once again, that's also that's uh, two versus three now. Um, I believe so. That's going to be a really cracking game. Going to say after the weekend, probably St Kilda. Yeah. Um, when they're on, they are on. Mm. I think they're the ones to watch. And then uh, Devils have a bye and Bascos versus Seaford. It's a big game for you guys down at the weekend. It is. Uh, tell us about this weekend's game. Yeah, so this week um, is Donate Life Round for us. It's the third year that we've, we've um, got behind this cause. Um, it's also um, a chance we take to really promote... Um, women's football in the area. So um, we've made it into a bit of a showcase. So we'll have um, the Phillip Island and Dalston Youth Girls kicking off at one o'clock, followed by um, us against Seaford um, at 2.30 with an all-girls um, Oz kick at half-time, awesome. which is pretty That's cool. That's awesome. That's really yeah. good. Yeah. All right, so if you're in the area, get down, check it out, get behind a good cause. I'm sure there's uh, going to be like lots of raising money yeah. and things. We can... uh, not money so much, just raising awareness. awareness. So, um, 
if you're not already a, an organ donor, I definitely um, recommend signing up. It's really easy. Just go online, donate, donatelife.com.au. I think it is. takes about 30 seconds. Yep. Um, but, yeah, it's a really easy way, I guess, to um, do something positive once you've gone. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. So good. What a great initiative. Alrighty, guys, do not forget to download the Game Face app. Um, it's got the fixture scores, news, goal kickers, and you'll probably see your own face on there if you haven't already. <laughs> totally likely. We All get right. to see it every week. Hey. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a treat. Okay. <laughs> Let's check out uh, Division 2 results from the weekend. All right, straight up. We've got Beaconsfield uh, played the Devils, and Beaconsfield gave them an absolute mm -hmm. run for their money in a nice, cold, wet morning. Uh, 51 to 10. Uh, Devils are just holding to fifth at the moment just due to percentage uh, because uh, both them and Seaford have had uh, two draws, so it's quite interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, and Jade Ho as well, best on ground for Beaconsfield, second week in a row, so doing really good things down there. Uh, Marambina defeated Cranbourne. That was a really big... A big win. Yeah, yep. big win. I think, what, because Cranbourne had only lost their first game mm. last week. And uh, th to have two in a row and Marambina just came out and absolutely smashed them. So, um, yeah, to, uh, that, that was, I think, a really kind of shared out to the rest of the competition with Marambina there. Um, we had Pearsdale, who defeated EDS 56-5. Um, to five. Seaford won in a pretty low-scoring game against um, the Sharks. Yeah, and Tyab defeated Hastings, who seemed to have struggled a little bit um, recently. So. Yeah, mm. Zoe Mitchell down there from Hastings still um, playing really yeah. good footy. Good stuff. If we have a look at the Division 2 goal kickers, we have Ash Murr from Murrumbina on 22 goals, Katie Dean from Tyab on 12 goals, Amy Buchan from Beaconsfield on 11 goals, and Sheridan Holland from Cranbourne also on 11 goals. Jeez. Ash, I think it was uh, so she on 22 goals. Fifth, uh, fifth. Oh, sorry, she kicked five on the weekend. Mm. Who's in the best? Oof. Pretty good. Yeah. Solid. All right. Let's check out uh, the uh, upcoming games for Division Two. We've got. Uh, feel free to chime in, everyone. Beaconsfield versus Seafed. Uh, what are we thinking there? Well, it's it's going to be uh, Beaconsfield uh, eighth versus fourth at the moment. I think so. We'll probably go. I'd say. Uh, well, I'd say Seafed, but Beaconsfield will definitely be playing some pretty good footy. Yeah, I also know, I think Seaford have a couple of girls going overseas um, recently, so it'd be interesting to see if that makes a little bit of a difference in mm. between their two teams there. Oh, yeah, it always um, changes it up. It, I guess it, it, it probably depends as well how many they've got kind of coming down through their yeah. D1 team that can yeah. really affect that. Um, EDS versus Hastings, uh, probably have to go with EDS at the moment, um, but I'm um, really hoping to see if... Uh, I'd love to see Hastings get up, actually. <laughs> I'd love to see that happen. Um, cool. Uh, Tyab versus Pearsdale. What are we thinking, gang? Thinking oh. the way. Tyab. Tyab probably get the win there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They've been uh, playing some pretty good footy there, and I think um, probably that those top two at the at the moment are really shining through. Yeah. At this point in I, time. I think it's um, I think Murrumbina Tyab grand final. I think you'd almost pencil it in there. Yeah. From my opinion, probably um, miles above the other teams. Mm. Um, Tyab are one of those teams that, you know, kind of. Uh, sneak through a bit quietly and then can just, you know, pull it out when they need to. They've got some really experienced players there and, and when they're on fire, they're really hard, they're to, hard to beat, as we've found out the hard way at Vasco. <laughs> <laughs> but some really great games with Tyab. Here we go. Uh, Murren Bina versus the Devils. Well, of course I'm going to say the Devils are <laughs> going to win. Uh, but Murren Bina can be pretty hard to beat. <laughs> Might go the Devs. Uh, I'm sure you guys are going to... Suggest yeah. Marambina? I think Marambina's a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, of course. And uh, St Kilda Sharks versus Cranbourne. Um, that should be a pretty good game, I think, down there. But I think probably Cranbourne are going to want to be bouncing back. Yeah, I think Cranbourne will get this one. And there we go. All right. Time to show off your bruises. My favourite. Everyone, your bruises, your bruise, you lose. <laughs> it's time to really just get up and close and personal with some bruises on everyone's bodies. And we've got this one from T-Bird. Is that T's real name? T no. Bird? No, what's no, T Bird? Teresa. Teresa. Yeah. Teresa Bird? No, it's Teresa <laughs> Hoare. Okay. Uh, Teresa Bird. We'll go with uh, a cracker on the leg there. I think there's a full boot to the leg. That's uh, what you get. So no more boots to the leg, but uh, that looks great. And here we've got Britta's. Alicia Brindley down there from the devs got this one. She got I a knee. I feel bad for laughing, I know. but that is just incredible. But... Hey, yep, it's not you, so <laughs> <laughs> please send them in. We will laugh at you with love. Okay? But, yeah, this happened to her in the last two minutes of the game. 
it's always a way. And we've got this one from Fiona Samford from the Mornington Footy Club. Jeez, that is, that is um, there's some serious It's a bit happy now. Yeah. Doing really well. This one here from Sarah Mack. Oh. Hey, you know what? Okay, so here's a, here you go. Here's a story. This isn't actually from the weekend by any chance. I just thought I was going. I was deleting photos from my phone last night, and I found this bruise on my leg. And it is football related mm. because our football team has a band, and uh, I'm a singer in that band. <gasps> and I also play the tambourine. And when you hit the tambourine on your leg too hard for a oh, set, wow. that's what happens. So for all you tambourine players out there. Be careful. <laughs> okay? There you go. <laughs> Guys, make sure if you are not on the Southeast Women's Football League Game Face Facebook group, make sure that you get on there. Upload things. We want to know what you guys are doing. We also would love to know um, if you want to hear anything from us or see anything else from us. A little bit of feedback. Absolutely. Um, so make sure you Bring jump it. on that. If you know people in your team aren't on it, add them in or tell them to get on it. Please. Right. We are going to take a look into the Division 3 results. We had Pakenham played Kringle and Pakenham got the job done. Um, I thought it was going to be a touch closer, um, that game, but um, kudos to Pakenham. They seem to be, yeah, really flying, but we're looking forward to, I'm looking forward to playing them in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah. See if we can get a little bit of revenge. Mm -hmm. um, Mornington <laughs> defeated Cerberus Crib Point. Um, Obviously a pretty um, low score line, but again, the weather probably played a bit of an effect. Yeah. And Red Hill defeated Officer. Now, I saw some vision on the, the page of that game. Yeah. Oh, the rain and the wind was crazy. Yeah, the girls mm. have got, uh, I think we've got a photo there of the girls as well, standing there in uh, covered in mud and yeah. uh, just looking bloody cold. Yeah. So, yeah. how um, good is it when you can feel your, your fingers and your toes? Yeah, again? <laughs> yeah. Like played feeling. on the Red Hill ground as well, and from memory, it oh, has a bit, of a, chip. a bit of a lean, yeah. so I imagine it was all played on one <laughs> yeah, side of the ground. Yeah, exactly right. And Warwick will upset um, my mob, the Franks and Bombers, on the weekend mm. by five points. Um, yeah, kudos to... Oracle, hopefully our girls can bounce back. Um, we've had a few pretty honest conversations over the last few week. honest conversations. How was, so, it? Uh, was it? Was it bloody wet and cold down there? Yeah, it was very wet, very windy. It was like a sea breeze happening, but there was no sea. It was uh, incredible. Of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's check out the uh, the goal kickers for Division Three. So we've got uh, Rosalind Davis there on thirteen goals for Pakenham, Alicia Rees uh, from the Bombers on ten, and Sage Han as well from Pakenham also with ten. Just Going through a, a few sausage rolls there. Yeah. Good on you guys. Um, this week's games, we have Pakenham versus um, Service Crib Point. I'm probably going to have to say that Pakenham are going to get the job done here. Um, Officer versus Warrigal. I think that could be a good game. Um, yeah. We versus Officer, Bombers versus Officer not that long ago and actually um, played really good footy when they're at their best. So um, that could potentially be a good game. But I think Warrigal will um, Warrigal seem like they're on the up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're on a bit of a roll. Mm. Um, Kringle versus Red Hill. I think Kringle will get the job done, but I think Red Hill um, might give them a little bit um, of a crack. I reckon this one. is going to be a really good game, yeah. actually. Yeah. That's probably the match of the round. Yep. Mm -hmm. Get around them. <laughs> and um, my mom, the Bombers, are versing Mornington, and I'm going to say that the Bombers are going to get uh, the job done. I actually do think they're going to get the job done. And a special shout out to um, a couple of girls in my team. I just want to take this opportunity. We have our feeder club, the Frankston Rovers, and we have a few girls playing who are actually under, they're only 17 playing um, this year because they couldn't get an under 18s team up and they're doing a really awesome job. Um, we've also got the under 16 girls from Frankston Rovers training with us. Um, they're also doing a really awesome job, so keep that up, girls. I know they're always. Up for a mention. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, the girls. Give a shout out. Make sure they're joining the group. Get your face up on this thing. Yeah. Oh, good. All right. So now it's time. Under the bus. Favourite part of uh, the show where we're just going to bang a few uh, questions at you go and just uh, we'll, we'll see how we go. All right. <laughs> Oh, let's go for it. Okay, so just because it was really cold over the weekend, with uh, being so cold at football that you can't feel your feet or you can't feel your hands. Um, rather can't feel your feet. Need your hands to catch footy. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Who is the last person standing on footy trip? <laughs> well, it's usually me to be yes, honest. Oh, yes. yes. I like you. Um, <laughs> along with with T Bone, it's usually we're still there at the end. But um, I must say, Carly Heisel's lately has been showing some pretty good form. So solid. Yeah. 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 Every team Surprisingly, needs a rock. she's yeah. usually one of the first ones that's a bit wobbly, but still managed to be there at the end. So. Impressive. Yeah, get, yeah. get around it. Yeah. All right. Uh, which player is most likely to bring the wrong coloured football shorts? Oh, it's actually, it's probably a few. Um, probably one of the, one of the new girls, I yep. would say. Yeah, which there's lots of them, but 
Yeah, All no right. one I can really point out actually. Oh, fair enough. Uh, is your, your club legend angry? Is she really angry all the time? <laughs> you don't get that nickname without <laughs> uh, having a bit of white line fever. <laughs> Uh, what is uh, the best way to, sm to smuggle vodka into the races? <laughs> well, um, I have uh, posed as a pregnant lady before, managed to get three litres of vodka wow. on the chest and another five litres of, of goon as the, the belly. Yeah, it's Unbelievable actually, uh, scenes. It actually started out with just the in the bra and each year. It's probably about four years that I did it that I um, had to outdo myself. Wow. I think that's probably the limit. What? I don't think I can ever, <laughs> ever beat that. But, um, yeah, I did have a few people actually wanting to touch my belly and asking lots of questions about my pregnancy. So, yeah, it obviously was um, And dreams quite... came true. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, unbelievable yep. scenes. Yeah. <laughs> that's so good. That's one, of my hidden, one of my hidden talents. <laughs> all right. um, who is an all-around great bloke at Bass Coast? There's quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, how can I pick just one? It's actually a really great club. Um, everyone loves uh, Hannah Mills. Yeah. Oh, She's yes. number one. Yep. You'd, you'd know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yep. What a ledge. Yep. Get I don't know anyone that wouldn't, wouldn't love her. So, yep. yeah. Big shout out. Love you. Great <laughs> stuff down there. Who fake tans too much? Uh, there's not too many. Mm. Um, Sarah, Sarah Oldwell this year. Mm usually has a bit of a glow about her. Yep. Um, in the past, um, uh, Beck Slavin, she's, you know, usually pretty pretty solid on the tan. She's actually gone to, to South America to get a real tan this oh, okay. year. Well, um, so go. not playing with us, but, yeah, it does. does there's, been, there's a couple. Living yeah. alone. Yeah. No Who would you trust to kick a goal after the siren from 30 metres out to win you the game? <laughs> I like that you pointed out 30 metres yeah. because... Um, I think I said in my previous Game Face interview that um, uh, Angry from, you know, 25 is probably, <laughs> you know, I'd back her anything more than that. And, no. You know, <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, Cars. Cars is pretty, yeah, pretty the solid. One to watch. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, and final question. What is more of an accomplishment, winning a premiership or having a teammate with a tattoo that says, I love Tess? What do you think? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll hand it over <laughs> to you. <laughs> Well, I want to know the story behind it, <laughs> and then I'll make my decision. Uh, footy trip story, as cool. I imagine that you you put two and two yeah, together. Absolutely. But, um, yeah. Uh, one of the girls brought, you know, the kind of handheld tattoo. Oh, okay. Um, machine. Oh, yeah. Wow. So it wasn't just... a, like, go no, 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 no. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, yeah, so there's a few bad tattoos um, came out of that footy trip. Great. Um, but also some good ones. So, yeah, um, Taylor happened to say, what do you think I should get on my arm? And I said, test for the heart, obviously. And she went, okay. I went, no, I was like, I'm joking, you don't have to. Next thing. Next thing, inked yeah. on her arm for life. So, yeah, and she's um, been in the, the paper in a bit a few, few times lately, um, playing for Richmond, so <laughs> just... You know, zoom in. We'll zoom right zoom in on Zoom right in. It's on, I'm not sure which forearm, somewhere here or here, but yeah. Well, now, well, when she's in the AFLW, your name will be practically famous on her own. So it. keep an eye That's out for it. it. Congratulations. Oh, quickly, quickly, quickly. I've got a gift. Oh. I've got a gift. I've got a prize. I've got a prize. 20 years in the making, the S Club 7 uh, album. Uh, featuring many hits. Thank you for coming. How, how did you I got know? that straight from? I got straight that from Savers. Yeah, my favourite shop. There you go. <gasps> That's going straight. Well, I don't think my car has a CD player anymore, anymore, so I'm gonna have to wait till I get home. But okay. yeah, thank you thanks so very much, much for joining us. Thanks again. Not a problem. All right, guys. Thanks for listening to us talk a little bit extra this week on the Game Face Footy Show. Um, we want to say a huge shout out to Benny Go Banks, Swift's Locker, and Eleven Eleven Fitness for bringing us this show. And we'll catch you this yeah, next week. Game next game week. I mean, hope that the weather's a little bit better. Get your game face. Get your game face on. Get your game face. Get your game face on.